Hi, I'm Stephen Hart. I'm a GP in Northern Ireland. In the midst of COVID-19, I want to chat to you briefly about coping with growing pressures and increased workload. I'm going to take this in a slightly surprising direction due to some uh, major challenge that I've felt myself in recent days. We're all busy, uh, some of us exceptionally so, I would imagine. For others, there's more of that sense of loss of purpose, actually, because we're maybe not seeing 35 patients face to face in the way that we would have done. Things are different now. I work as an executive coach and uh, I do time management workshops with GPs. And during those, normally what we talk about are great things like prioritization techniques and uh, delegation skills, how to say no, how to reduce um, time wasting activities in the workplace, things like that. I do want to take it somewhere different now because all of those things you can easily read about or you can get a coach for a one-off session and discuss any one of those. One thing I do talk about is the Pareto principle and many people have heard of this. It's the principle of predictable imbalance or the 80-20 rule which states that uh, 20% of activity produces 80% of results. And this is something that's seen in many walks of life. It started off with an Italian economist, and Pareto, who noticed that 20% of the pods in his garden produced 80% of the output in terms of harvest. But you can notice it everywhere. 20% of the carpet gets 80% of the wear. 20% of the patients get 80% of the budget. 20% of the BNF gets red for 80% of, of our needs there. 20% of revision for your exams, the first 20% gets you 80% of your results. So what can we learn from that? Well, yeah, it's on the night before the exam, don't sit up after 3 and 4 a.m. revising because you've probably already got 80%. Does that mean that we don't push on beyond 20% of our work? No, it doesn't. But what it does mean is we can afford to let ourselves off the hook. And it's really important that we focus on the right 20% to start with. Where I want to take this is a quote by Stephen Covey, who said the following. People expect us to be busy, overworked. It has become a status symbol in our society. If we're busy, we're important. If we're not busy, we're embarrassed to admit it. Busyness is where we get our security. It's validating, popular and pleasing. It's also a good excuse for not dealing with the first things in our lives. Has the busyness of this time gotten out of hand? Are you able to stop in the evenings? Am I using busyness to avoid my insecurities? In the 1950s, a cardiologist called Mayor Friedman coined the phrase hurry sickness. He noticed that um, his patients, the cardiovascular patients, seemed to have an increased, uh, he coined the type A personality, but what he included in that was they had this hurrying sense of time urgency that other people didn't have, behaviours that led to anxiety and this feeling of hurry. Um, John Mark Comer, in his brilliantly titled book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, writes that hurry is a form of violence on the soul. He describes hurry sickness symptoms to be irritability, hypersensitivity, restlessness, workaholism, not having emotional capacity for the family when you get home, emotional numbness, lack of care for your own body. Does that sound familiar to anyone? You might say, look, I don't have time to slow down. And everyone is busy, but uh, Comer writes that if, if I was to suddenly give you an extra 10 hours in your day today, probably what we would do is fill it up again with great stuff, but we'd probably fill it up and get uh, into a hurried place again. If you were to keep a log of your Netflix hours or your time spent in escapism, um, would you still see that you have no time I wonder, do I let uh, increased pressure actually push me into escapism? Buying new stuff, binging on new shows, or scrolling my social media aimlessly? Honestly, for me, my allegiance to my phone is where I need to start. 
Could I use this time for life-giving and nourishing activities? Is there a valuable lesson here in COVID season that should not be lost when a more normal period returns? Especially if you do find yourself with a bit more time off in the evenings when you might have been out at meetings in the past, are you allowing yourself to just slow? Do you allow yourself to just not look at your phone? Maybe even to intentionally not jump to the shorter queue in the shops to accept our limitations. COVID-19 updates mean that emails have gone nuts, but do I have to look at it just before I go to bed at night or could I set specific set times through the day to check those things? So yeah, we're gonna work hard, we'll work efficiently, but let's avoiding the trap of believing that we don't have any time. Maybe the good old 80-20 rule has got it right. Can you let yourself off the hook Use your time to breathe, to be still and avoid just filling it up. Thank you for listening and I wish you well.